This is for the tax objective three. It says the graph of a line that contains the point negative one five and four five is shown below. What is the best which best represents the line of line if the slope is doubled and the y intercept remains constant? So here's your graph. Now when I would look at this graph, it says I need to find first off the y intercept. The y intercept is right here at three, zero three. It says that the y intercept remains constant. So let's look and see. Let's see here. A well, that's down here at 5. That's not the right answer. Right here on the next one, it is at 3, so that could be it. This one, it is at 3. This one here is not. That's not it. And then it said, but what if this, the slope was doubled? Well, the slope here, 1, 2 over 1. It's The slope is 2. What? Well, what we need to know though too is if it's doubled it means that it's getting larger and the larger the slope the steeper the line. Well out of the two of them, out of the two graphs, which one looks steeper than that one? The answer should be G. For the next problem, it says in the distance formula D equals RT, R represents the rate of change or slope. Which ray on the graph best represents the slope of 55 miles per hour? That's 55 over 1. So I'll go over here to my graph and I'll go up. There's 50, up 55, and over to where the 1 is. Put a dot. That is ray W. So your answer should be A. Number 3. Which equation best describes a line that has a y-intercept of 5 and a slope of x? The slope is going to have an x next to it. So, let me see. This right here, nope, that goes in parentheses. That's not it. D is not it. Your answer should be A. Your next one here says which function includes the data set, and it gives you the points. Honestly, I would go into the calculator, put these into y1, Press second graph and look in the table for x and y and match up those points. Okay, so e but even if you didn't have a calculator to do that, we could go through and start looking. This is the x, this is the y. So like here, it says x divided by 2. Well, 2 is x. 2 divided by 2, that would mean y is 1. This would mean that I would have 2, 1. Well, that's not the answer. Um, this one here, again, I could go to this one, and 2 times 2, 2 times x is 4, that works. 2 times x in this one, 2 times 6, I'm sorry, yeah, 2 times 6, if it was 6, then y would be 12. So that cannot be it. If I look here, 2 times 2 minus 9, 4 minus 9 is negative 5. Well, that would be 2, negative 5. That would not be it. Your answer ends up being J. Again, put in the calculator and match your table or plug in the points and find out what the answer is. The next problem we have is it says what is the slope of the line described by the equation 8x plus 12y equals 18? Well, I'm going to rewrite it here. To find the slope, I need to solve for y. I'm going to subtract 8x from each side. I get 12y equals negative 8x plus 18. I'm going to divide by 12. This is my slope, but there is no negative 8 over 12. If I reduce it, it becomes, I divide a 4, so that would be 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds. My answer would be A. The next one says, the line segment of the graph shows an altitude of a landing plane from the time in which the wheels are lowered to the time it touches the ground. Which of the following best describes the slope of the line? So when we're trying to find the slope, we're going down so many feet. It's feet. It's y per x. So it's feet per second. Foot per second, foot free per second. Okay, so that's all fine, so let's go and look. If I look here, I'm going, each line is 250. So I'm going down 250, right here, 
and over 30. Let's see if I even did that right here. If I divide that out, ends up being 8.333. So we are going down 8 feet. We're going down 8 feet per second. Well, it's 8.3, but they're rounded here, rounded here, so it's 8 feet per second. The answer should be G. The next one, it says, which of the following ordered pairs is the x-intercept or the y-intercept of the function? So either one of these, it could be the x or the y. So let's figure this out. Let's look at the y-intercept. For the y-intercept, I'm going to cover up the x. And it says negative y equals 8 y would end up being negative 8, so I have 0, negative 8. That's the y-intercept. Well, that's nowhere in there. So it must be the x-intercept. So if I cover up, right here, I'll cover up that to find the x, cover up the y, I get 2x equals 8. 2x equals 8. Divide by 2, x equals 4. Well, 4, 0. There it is. The next one, it says a small business purchased a van to handle delivery orders. The graph below shows the value of the van over a period of time. Okay, it says the van was purchased. It says which of the following best describes the situation? The van was purchased for $1,600. Oh, no, no, it starts here at $16,000. That's not it. Well, I go right here. The van increases in value. This is not increasing. It is going down. The van has no value after five years. Well, at five years, it has a value of $8,000. So it's not that. It's letter B. The next problem, it says the graph of a linear function is shown on the coordinate grid. If the y-intercept changed to 5 and the slope became negative 4, which statement describes the relationship between the two lines if they're graphed on the same? So, okay, so let's go and graph 0, 5. Um, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here, because their y-intercept's up a little higher. And the slope is 4, negative 4. Negative 4 over 1 means to go down 4 to the right 1. So right here, I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, down 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1. Okay, it looks like the two lines intersect right there at that point. That point is 1, 1. It says the y-intercepts, and there it is right here, the y-intercepts are one unit apart and the lines intersect at, y, at 1, 1. The next one, it says what is the slope of the line that contains the points 8, negative 3, and negative 2, 7? Well, you can graph it if you want to. I'm going to build a table and do delta y over delta x. I have 8, negative 3, and negative 2, 7. Delta y, well, this is plus 10. Delta x, the change in x, that's minus 10. So then to find the slope, it's delta y divided by delta x. 10 over negative 10, which is negative 1. My answer is A. The next one, the cost of running a car for one day at cars plus, uh, plus is $20 plus 10 cents per mile. The cost of running a car for one day at need a car is $20 plus 15 cents per mile. In, the, in a graph of the cost of the rental car, what does the cost per mile, that right there gives me the key, that right there gives me the key that the per mile, that's going to tell me that that's the slope. Next right here it says the order pairs in the table are contained in this, um, are contained in the graph of, of a linear function. What are the x and y intercepts of the graph of this linear function? Okay, so what we're going to need to do is come over here to this table and do, find the equation. So I'm going to do delta y, the change in y is minus 2. Delta x is plus 3. So the slope, delta y over delta x, negative 2 over 3. I'm going to kind of build my table a little bit far, bigger or farther out so I have more room. I'm going to have, oh, let's see what I'm going to need to put here. Negative 9 
times negative 2 thirds. When you multiply these two together, you end up with a positive 6. What do you have to do to 6 to get to 4? Well, you need to subtract 2. So my equation is negative 2 thirds x minus 2. Well, just from that right there, I know my y-intercept is 0, negative 2, because that's always my y-intercept. So let me go over here. I've got y-intercept of, oh no, that's not it. It has to be 0, negative 2. Y-intercept, nope. Nope. So the only answer I have is D. Number 13, the last one, says the amount of chlorine Y needed for a swimming pool varies directly with the amount of water X needed to fill the pool. Varies directly. That's important. Where did that go? Varies directly. That means that our um, Y intercept will be zero. If 16 units of chlorine is needed for every 1,250 gallons of water, which of the following represents the equation for the direct variation? So I've got 16 over 1,250. And if I go to reduce that, if I divide each one of them for, um, in half, I have 8 over 625. You can also put 16 divide 1,250 in your graphing calculator. Press math and enter and enter and it will reduce the fraction for you and you will find that this will be your answer.